Good morning and welcome to the webinar. My name is Nick Martin. I'm a content engineer here at MarkForged. And today we're going to be talking about 3D printing, CMM fixturing, and check gauges for faster, more cost-effective inspection. I'm joined by Marco Medecki, who's one of our marketing specialists, who's going to be helping out with questions at the end. So here's the schedule for the webinar today. We're going to first have a brief overview of typical inspection fixturing. And then we're going to take a look at how Mark Forged composite 3D printing can help. After that, we're going to explore some examples from the field, which will include some customer examples. And then we're going to have a live Q&A where we'll take questions from you all at the end. So first, let's have an overview of traditional inspection fixtures. Uh, so this is a routine component of the manufacturing process. As parts come off of the line, a few of them are examined to make sure that uh, specs are being, are being met. And specialized work holding is required for this process. And so that's what we're going to be focusing on in the webinar today. And two examples of uh, fixturing for this is CMM fixtures and check gauges. So first, let's take a look at CMM inspection. Uh, you can see in the picture highlighted in white is the end effector of a, of a CMM, which stands for a coordinate measuring machine. And so this is a precision tool, and it probes multiple positions on the part to determine uh, if the geometry is within spec. And so fixtures for these are typically custom machined, or they're assembled from parts from a modular kit that you can buy. Today, we're going to be focusing on machined CMM fixtures. Another popular form of fixturing is check gauges. Uh, check gauges are typically used if you're trying to quickly and accurately determine if a, if a part is satisfying basic tolerances. And usually you use them with parts that have more complex surfaces and contours. So if the part fits into the check gauge, then the part is within spec. And then if it doesn't fit, then it's not within spec. And so these can be used to confirm really complex geometries, but also simple dimensions like a diameter. And also the fixtures for these are custom machined as well. So those are two of the most popular uh, fixtures for inspection. And now let's go over what makes a good inspection fixture and how different fabrication methods may size up. So the ideal fixture is rigid enough to avoid deflection during the measurement process. And it's also manufactured with really tight tolerances because as it's quality assurance, you want to make sure that it is precise to the, your correct measurements. Finally, you want them to be produced quickly and you want to spend the least amount of money possible and the least amount of effort possible to make them. So the current methods, they satisfy the basic requirements. When it's machined out of aluminum, um, it's definitely going to be rigid enough. And uh, typically, when you're getting something machined, it's going to have a tolerance of less than 5 thou, or around 5 thou. But it ha definitely has its significant drawbacks. So while your stiffness and precision may be adequate, fixtures can take weeks to produce. And I know some of you may be thinking, I don't think it really takes that long to machine a part. And you're right, the actual machining process doesn't take weeks. Um, but that's not what you're spending most of your time waiting for. Machine shops are usually backlogged and have a long queue of requests. So your design is going to sit untouched for days before it's even put on the Miller lathe. And on top of that, if you're outsourcing your machine parts, then you're going to be waiting for shipping as well. And so this lengthy process is also costly. It can cost thousands of dollars to, to produce a part. And all of this takes up valuable machine shop labor and time, which pushes the lead time even further uh, for other parts you may be waiting on. And the design process is pretty cumbersome. You, you know, after you design your part, it also has to be prepared in CAM before it can be put in the machinist queue. And then due to constraints that are inherent to the machining process, the more complex your geometry is, the harder it is to prepare in CAM, and the more expensive and time consuming the entire process is. So alternatively, composite 3D printing satisfies the basic requirements and remedies some of these pain points that I just talked about. Continuous fiber reinforcement allows for fixtures to be as strong as metal. 
And with layer heights as small as 50 microns, tolerances are tight enough for these precision applications. Fixtures can be produced the same day, and they typically cost orders of magnitude less than machining them. Parts are often much less than $100. It all depends on the size of the part. And they also take far less labor to fabricate. Um, you can get your part typically within hours after designing it. Um, you don't need any cam in the process, and the effort doesn't increase with complexity. No matter how complex the part is, the printer is taking care of it for you. So it's as simple as designing your part and then pressing print on the printer. So you can see here that um, the composite 3D printed parts have some clear advantages, and we're going to go over some customer examples so you can see that in action. But first, I want to go over what I had mentioned already, which is continuous fiber fabrication or CFF. So in order to make parts strong enough for the factory floor, we've developed this method. And our printers have a dual print head. So one head prints onyx, which is our nylon chopped carbon fiber mixture, which makes up most of the part. And then the other extruder prints a fiber composite, such as fiberglass, Kevlar, or carbon fiber, in a continuous strand. And this embeds the onyx with um, a really tough internal reinforcement that can take the stresses of what, whatever load you're putting on the part. And depending on how you're planning on loading the part, uh, our slicing software, Iger, is going to aid you, in, aid you in strategically placing those fibers so that your part can be as robust as it needs to be for whatever application you're using it for. And when the print is finished, you end up with an extremely strong, light composite part. With that, let's move on to our first customer example. JJ Churchill is a manufacturer for precision aerospace parts. Um, so they use a CMM fixture to hold these turbine blades when they inspect them. And this requires a really accurate and a really stiff work holding. They were spending about two weeks and around $2,000 per fixture back when they were machining them. And with directional strength being their number one requirement, Mark Ford's Onyx with carbon fiber reinforcement was the perfect choice for their application. And it's actually the only material that met their requirements for strength and stiffness at an affordable price. After they replaced the traditional methods with composite 3D printing, they reduced cost by 80% and saved 70% of the time producing inspection work holding. A side note about JJ Churchill's process Ironically, during the quality inspection process, you can actually blemish parts and ruin them, especially in precision engineering when you're making turbine blades. Their aluminum fixtures before, um, when they would clamp down on the part, would sometimes mar the part and ruin it altogether. But the non-marring qualities of onyx have eliminated this challenge since you can clamp it down with a lot of force and the soft jaw-like quality won't actually damage the part. And if you're interested in hearing more about soft jaws, we have a webinar entitled How to Print Soft Jaws that you can check out through that link. Our next example is a check gauge from Deco, which is a company that uh, is a part supplier for construction, automotive, and industrial companies. This check gauge is pretty large. It's about two feet long, which makes it pretty infeasible to machine, and was quoted by another 3D printing company to cost thousands of dollars to make. This was printed on a Mark Forged X7 in about two days and cost around $50. Another reason composite printing was a optimal method for this is that the nylon mixed with chopped carbon fiber, it, it uh, provides a, a strength that resists deformation. So when you're repeatedly interfacing parts with this check gauge, it's not gonna deform over time, which gives you really accurate, really repeatable inspection. This is another example from Deco. Uh, more check gauges. Uh, so the Mark Forge printer gave 80% cost savings on these gauges compared to machining them. And you can see there's some pretty complex geometries that it's able to handle. With our industrial series that prints layer heights of 50 microns, which is about 2 thou, um, you can get these really precise geometries no problem. And as you can see from the picture, you can interface the parts with machined parts or other fixtures so that you can find a solution for whatever fixturing you need. Our last example part is a piece of a rotor for a French horn. To confirm that the surfaces are manufactured to spec, the rotor requires a check gauge with small irregular geometries that are often difficult to machine. While it would likely take multiple days to get this gauge back from the machine shop, it was printed on a Mark Forge printer in about five hours. The check gauge is designed to inspect five criteria for the part with a simple procedure. 
First, the outer surface is checked by pushing the rotor into place here. If the part fits, this section has been manufactured to spec. Next, the diameter of the pegs in the end are verified, followed by the outer diameter of the rotor. For diameters, there are two holes fabricated for each spec, representing the upper and lower bounds for those diameters. If the part fits in the upper bound hole and not in the lower bound hole, then the part is within spec. But if it fits into both holes, that means that the part has been manufactured too small. And if it doesn't fit into either hole, the diameter is too large. The same idea applies for the outer diameter. If it fits into the larger hole, that means it's designed at or below spec. And if it doesn't fit into the smaller hole and does fit into the larger hole, that means it is manufactured to spec. Now I know that may seem confusing at first, so I've included a video that explains how this check gauge operates. So the first thing we're gonna do is push the part into place. You'll see that it fits here, and that means that the part has been manufactured correctly with the outer surface. Next, what we're gonna do is test the diameter of the longer pin, and also the length of the longer pin. You'll see that the bottom of it is flush with the bottom of the check gauge, meaning that the length has been manufactured correctly. Next, we'll check the diameter of the smaller pin, and then we'll test the lower bound of both pins and make sure that they don't fit in that lower bound hole. Finally, we check the outer diameter. It should fit into the upper bound hole and not into the lower bound hole. So that's how composite 3D printing with Mark Forged can save you time and money on inspection fixtures. You can see from the examples that typical CMM fixture and check gauge fabrication is expensive and time consuming. 3D printing with continuous fiber reinforcement eliminates most of the cost and time associated with producing inspection fixtures without compromising precision or stiffness.